In this video, we're going to look at Denberry Resources. This is an oil and gas company located in Plano, Texas. And what I do in my videos is I run my discounted cash flow model to see if I can figure out the true value of a company's stock. I also look at the financial ratios of the company and compare them with their competitors. So let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 129 spot $4 million. So it's definitely a small company. And let's see what they're trading at. They're trading at 25 cents. Next, we're going to pull the free cash flows. And this is the way you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today. So I put four years of their actual free cash flows into the model. Now I'm going to pull the net income, which is on the income statement. That's a profit and loss for the company. And I'll throw that into the model. Now I'm going to pull the revenue from the income statement. That's just the sales for the company. And I'll put that into the model. Let's take a look at the numbers. They had negative free cash flow in 2016 and 2017. But in 2018 and 19, they had positive free cash flow. So that's a good sign. They turned things around. They did have negative net income in 2016, but positive in 2017, 18, and 19. And their revenue has been fairly steady, so we should get a decent value for this company. Let's look at a capital structure so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They paid 81 million of interest on their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. Go to liability section. Current debt 102 million, that's debt due within 12 months. Long term debt of 2.2 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. Interest payments on debt are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. The income before tax is 321 million, and the income tax is 104 million. So they pay 32% in taxes. The cost of debt is 2.4%. Let's get the cost of equity. We need the beta for that. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And that beta is massive, 4.21. I don't think I've ever seen a beta above four before. So that means the stock is really volatile. When a stock is really volatile, the investors are supposed to receive a greater return for the risk they're taking. Let's also get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are mainly cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. That's on the balance sheet. That's 180 million. Let's pull their current liabilities. That's 364 million. This is how much money the company owes within the next 12 months. And their stockholders equity, which is assets minus liabilities. Now we're gonna pull the EBIT. Earnings before interest and taxes. That's called operating income on the income statement. That's $346 million. So let's look at a capital structure. The cost of debt is 2.4% and they have 62% debt in the capital structure. The cost of equity is 35% and they have 38% equity in their capital structure. So the weighted average cost of capital is 14.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. Let's look at the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. And if we discount those numbers back to today's value using the weighted average cost of capital, we get a value of the company of $332 million. We divide that by 507 million shares. And we get an intrinsic stock price of 65 cents. They're trading at 26 cents, so they're trading at a 61% discount. So it's a strong buy according to the model. And simply Wall Street does not have a value. They don't have enough information because the way they value a company is they pull analyst estimates and put them all together. And I don't think many analysts are looking at this particular company. Let's see what the stock has been trading at. So a couple of years ago, it looks like it almost hit $7 a share. And it's kind of been up and down. Lately, it's been on a steep decline. 
And the way my model calculates the future free cash flow is just based off of prior four years of free cash flow, net income and revenue and how those numbers move. That's how it calculates the future free cash flow. I'm kind of playing a trick on you. I just want to prove a point. Just by looking at prior financial information, although that's really important, I think that's the most important thing when valuing a company is how they've performed in the past. You also have to look at more recent events because the financials are as of 12 31 19. This company has been negatively affected by the decline in oil prices starting in March, and it's actually missed an interest payment on its debt on June 30th for $8 million. And although it's not forced into bankruptcy, because the way you're forced into bankruptcy is when you miss the interest payment on your debt. They're given a 30-day grace period to pay that money, and if they don't, they're likely headed into default. I get comments on this channel every now and then of people saying, oh, you're a moron. You didn't look at the fact that they're acquiring this company or the fact that they just issued $100 million of debt and they have extra financing to run their business. But I really focus on the past because you, nobody knows the future. What we do is we use the prior financial information to project the future. Of course, if something occurs that's going to affect their business positively, I may build that into the model or, or note that. Until you could prove that you could generate positive free cash flow and strong net income, I'm not going to be investing in your company. Because could you imagine if a friend said, invest in my company, give me $50,000 and I'll make you half owner. And if he said the past few years, he's been losing about $50,000 a year, you would of course say, why would I invest in you? And if he says, because in the future, I'm going to be making tons of money and we're going to be rich so you should invest now, you would not do it because in order to invest and feel like you're getting a positive return, you need to see proven results. And of course, companies like Tesla are not generating positive free cash flow, but they're showing results by building a car that a lot of people buy. And you can see the future of that company. So let's look at the financial ratios just for fun. They have a great PE of 0.6, that's price of stock over earnings per share. Because their stock price is so low, it's only 26 cents. And the earnings per share is 43 cents. And to get earnings per share, it's net income, 217 million, over shares outstanding. So it looks great because the stock price has been driven down so much. But when a company's going to go bankrupt, it doesn't really help you out too much. A really great price to sales ratio, 0.1. That's price of stock over sales per share. And to get sales per share, it's just revenue over shares outstanding. Price to book is really good of 0.1. This is price of stock, 26 cents over book value per share, 278. And to get book value per share, it's equity. Equity is assets minus liabilities over shares outstanding. So this indicates that if the company liquidated and went into bankruptcy, it would be able to pay its shareholders $2.78 each, even though each shareholder only is worth $0.26 cents each. Of course, that would never happen because if it did go into bankruptcy, its assets would probably be worth a fraction of what they're actually worth. They have a current ratio of 0.5, so they can't cover their current liabilities. They have an interest coverage ratio of 4.2, so they can cover their interest payments four times, but that's back in 2019. Now it's a totally different story. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Baker Hughes, Canadian Natural Resources, Diversified Gas and Oil, Denbury, this company, Marathon Oil, Occidental Petroleum, Shorecore, and White Cap Resources. So Denbury has the best price to earnings ratio and price to book ratio of all the companies. So the ratios don't look bad. So that's why for a novice investor, you may be fooled that this company looks really attractive, but it's, it's not. You just have to do a quick Google search and you'll find out that they are headed to default, most likely. So I hope you learned something new. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.